Life Lessons by Elizabeth Kubler-Ross and David Kessler. Two experts on death and dying teach us about the mysteries of life and living. Content A message from Elizabeth a message from David, a note to the reader. Chapter 1, Authenticity. Chapter 2, Love. Chapter 3, Relationships. Chapter 4, Loss. Chapter 5, Power. Chapter 6, Guilt. Chapter 7, Time. Chapter 8, Fear. Chapter 9, Anger. Chapter 10, Play. Chapter 11, Patience. Chapter 12, Surrender. Chapter 13, Forgiveness. Chapter 14, Happiness. Final Lesson. A Message from Elizabeth. We all have lessons to learn during this time called life. This is especially apparent when working with the dying. The dying learn a great deal at the end of life, usually when it is too late to apply. After moving to the Arizona desert in 1995, I had a stroke on Mother's Day that left me paralyzed. I spent the next few years at death's door. Sometimes I thought death would come within a few weeks. Many times I was disappointed that it did not come for I was ready. But I have not died because I am still learning the lessons of life, my final lesson. These lessons are the ultimate truth about our life. They are the secrets to life itself. I wanted to write one more book, not on death and dying, but on life and living. Each of us has a Gandhi and a Hitler in us. I mean the symbolically. A Gandhi refers to the best in us, the most compassionate in us, while the Hitler to the worst in us, our negativities and smallness. Our lessons in life involve working on our smallness, getting rid of our negativity and finding the best in ourselves and each other. These lessons are the wind storms of life. They make us who we are. We are here to heal one another and ourselves, not healing as in physical recovery, but a much deeper healing, the healing of our spirits, our souls. When we talk about learning our lessons, we are talking about getting rid of unfinished business. Unfinished business isn't about death, it's about life. It addresses our most important issues such as, yes, I made a nice living but did I ever take time out to really live? Many people have existed yet never really lived and they expend a tremendous amount of energy keeping a lead on their unfinished business. Since unfinished business is the biggest problem in life, it's also the primary issue we address as we face death. Most of us pass on with great deal of unfinished business. Many of us have at least some. There are so many lessons to learn in life. It's impossible to master all of them in one lifetime. But the more lessons we learn, the more business we finish, and the more fully we live, really live life. And no matter when we die, we can say, God, I have lived. A message from David. I have spent a great deal of time with people at the edge of life. This work has been enriching 
and life expanding. I can trace much of my growth psychologically, emotionally, and spiritually to my work with the time. While I am deeply grateful to those I have worked with and who have taught me so much, my lessons did not begin with them. Instead, they began many years ago with my own mother's death and continue to the present as I lose people I love. During the past few years, I have been preparing to say goodbye to a teacher, mentor, and dear, dear friend, Elizabeth. I have spent a great deal of time with her, being taught final lessons. Having taught me so much about my work with the dying, she was now facing death in her own life. She shared how she was feeling angry a lot of the time and her views on life. She was completing her last book, The Wheel of Life, and I was writing my first, The Needs of the Dying. Even during this challenging time of her life, she was profoundly helpful to me, dispensing advice on publishing my patience and life itself. Many times, it was enormously hard for me to leave her house. We would say our goodbyes, both believing that this would be the last time we would see each other. I would walk away in tears. It is so hard to lose someone who has meant so much. Yet, she said she was ready. But Elizabeth did not die. She slowly got better. She was not finished with life and it was clearly not finished with her. In days long gone, the community would have gathering places where children and adults listened to the older men and women told stories of life, of life's challenge and the lessons that can be drawn from the edge of life. People knew that sometimes our greatest lessons lie in our greatest pain. And they knew that it was important to the dying as well as to the living, that these lessons be passed on. That's what I hope to do, pass on some of the lessons I have learned. Doing so ensures that the best part of those who have died will live on. We find many things on this long, sometimes strange journey. We see as life but we mostly find ourselves who we really are what matters most to us we learn from peaks and valleys what love and relationships really are we find the courage to push through our anger tears and fears in the mystery of all these we have been given all we need to make life work to find happiness not perfect lives, not storybook tales, but authentic lives that can make our hearts swell with meaning. I had the privilege of spending time with Mother Teresa in few months before she died. She told me that her most important work was with the dying, because she considered life so precious. A life is an achievement, she said. And dying, the end of that achievement. Not only do most of us not see that, that as achievement, we don't see our life as achievement, and yet they are. The dying have always been teachers of great lessons, for it is when we are pushed to the edge of life, we see life most clearly. In sharing the lessons, the dying teach us much about the preciousness of life itself. In them, we discover the hero, that part that transcends all we have been through and delivers to all we are capable of doing and being. To not just be alive, but to feel alive. A note to the reader. This book is the result of a close collaboration between 
Elizabeth Kubler Rose and David Tesler. The case histories and personal experiences are taken from their lectures, workshops, and discussions with patients and family. Sometimes they involve David, sometimes Elizabeth, and sometimes both. For clarity, we use the we voice of Elizabeth and David throughout, except in case histories and personal experiences where Elizabeth are preceded by her initials EKR or David by his EK. Life lesson. The lesson of authenticity. Stephanie, a woman in her early 40s, shared this story at a lecture. One Friday afternoon, several years ago, I was on my way from Los Angeles to Palm Springs. This is not the best time to take on the Los Angeles freeway traffic, but I was anxious to get to the desert to spend a relaxing weekend with friends. At the outskirts of Los Angeles, the cars in front me came to a standstill. As I came to a stop behind a long line of cars, I glanced in my rear view mirror to discover that the car behind me was not stopping. In fact, it was hauling toward me with tremendous speed. I realized that the driver was not paying attention and I was going to be hit and hit hard. I knew that given his speed and fact that I was no superior with the car stopped in front of me, I was in great danger. I realized in that moment that I might die. I looked down at my hands and clenched on the steering wheel. I hadn't consciously tightened them. This was my natural state. And this is how I lived life. I decided that I did not want to live that way nor did I want to die that way. I closed my eyes, took a breath, and dropped my hand to my side. I let go. I surrendered to life and to death. Then I was hit with enormous force. When the movement and noise stopped, I opened my eyes. I was found. The car in front of me was wrecked. The car behind me was demolished. My car was compacted like an Accord. The police told me I was lucky I had relaxed. For muscle tension increases the likelihood of severe injury. I walked away feeling that I had been given a gift. The gift wasn't just that I had survived unhurt, it was greater than that. I saw how I had been living life and was given the opportunity to change. I had held life with a clenched fist, but now I realized I could hold it with my open hand, as if it were a feather resting on my palm. I realized that if I could relax enough to release my fear in the face of death, I could now truly enter life. In that moment, I felt more connected to myself than I ever had before. Like many others at the edge of life, Stephanie learned a lesson, not about death, but about life and living. Deep inside all of us, we know there is someone we were meant to be, and we can feel when we are becoming that person. The reverse is also true. We know when something's off and we are not the person we were meant to be. Consciously or not, we are all on a quest for answers, trying to learn the lessons of life. We grapple with fear and guilt. We search for meaning, love, and power. We try to understand fear, loss, and time. We seek to discover who we are and how we can become truly happy. Sometimes we look for these things in the face of our loved ones in religion, God or other places where there is